Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. I started watching Andrew. Everything that he said had a witness within my spirit, and he made the Word come alive. You know, he just helped me connect dots. I have such a passion and a love for the Word of God, and he deepened that for me. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing a series, teaching through a series that I've called The True Nature of God. And I think that tomorrow will be the end of this series. And so the offers that I'm making, I encourage you to please go to the effort of requesting these materials today. Tomorrow will be our last day. We're offering this book on the true nature of God. I also have that in Spanish. And then my staff put together this little summary of this teaching. We're offering this as a free gift to all of you. And then we also have CDs and DVDs that were made. And again, tomorrow, I believe, will be my last day to make these offers over the television. So I've been teaching a lot of things. There's no way I can go back and summarize everything. But yesterday, I was contrasting the way that people dealt with God under the Old Testament with the way that people deal with God under the New Testament. AND SPECIFICALLY, I WAS TALKING ABOUT INTERCESSION. AND SO MANY PEOPLE MODEL THE WAY THEY PRAY AND INTERCEDE FOR EITHER INDIVIDUALS OR FOR A COUNTRY BASED ON OLD TESTAMENT MODELS OF INTERCESSION. AND I USED uh, MOSES AS AN EXAMPLE YESTERDAY THAT IN THE 32nd CHAPTER OF THE BOOK OF EXODUS, HE PLEAD WITH GOD AND TOLD GOD TO REPENT. HE ACTUALLY REBUKED GOD AND SAID, REPENT OF THIS EVIL. AND THE AMAZING THING IS, IN EXODUS 32, 14, GOD REPENTED. THAT'S AMAZING. AND THEN A SECOND TIME, uh, THE WRATH OF GOD WAS RELEASED AND HE WAS DESTROYING SOME OF THE JEWS THAT HAD COME OUT AGAINST MOSES AND AARON. AND MOSES HAD AARON TAKE A CENSOR AND RUN INTO THE GROUP, AND WHEN THE PEOPLE THAT HAD DIED FROM THE PLAGUE, WHEN THE PLAGUE CAME TO THE INTERCESSION OF AARON, THE PLAGUE WAS STOPPED, AND THE OTHER PEOPLE ON THE OTHER SIDE WERE ALLOWED TO LIVE. AND SO NEW TESTAMENT INTERCESSORS WILL OFTEN USE THOSE EXAMPLES AS WAY THAT WE JUST NEED TO PLEAD WITH GOD AND TELL HIM TO REPENT AND NOT POUR OUT HIS WRATH AND HIS POWER UPON PEOPLE. BUT IN THE NEW TESTAMENT, IT SAYS IN 1 TIMOTHY, CHAPTER 2 AND VERSE 5, FOR THERE IS ONE GOD AND ONE MEDIATOR BETWEEN GOD AND MAN, THE MAN, CHRIST JESUS. MOSES WAS ACTING AS A MEDIATOR IN THE OLD TESTAMENT. A MEDIATOR IS A PERSON WHO STANDS IN BETWEEN TWO OPPOSING PARTIES AND TRIES TO STOP THE CONFRONTATION, THE the ANGER, THE uh, ANIMOSITY BETWEEN THEM. AND SO MOSES WAS A MEDIATOR, AND IT WAS APPROPRIATE FOR MOSES TO DO THAT BECAUSE JESUS HADN'T COME YET. BUT NOW THAT JESUS HAS COME, HE'S THE ONLY MEDIATOR. AND IF YOU PRAY LIKE MOSES DID, SAYING, GOD, REPENT AND TURN FROM YOUR FIERCE WRATH, AND DON'T POUR YOUR WRATH OUT ON THE UNITED STATES OR AN INDIVIDUAL THAT YOU'RE PRAYING FOR, WELL, THEN YOU, IN A SENSE, ARE INSULTING JESUS, SAYING THAT JESUS ISN'T THE ONLY MEDIATOR. mediator. YOU'VE GOT TO ADD TO WHAT HE'S DONE. YOU ALSO HAVE TO STAND THERE AND TELL GOD TO REPENT. IN THE NEW TESTAMENT, SEE, JESUS SO COMPLETELY SATISFIED THE WRATH OF GOD THAT THERE ISN'T ANY WRATH OF GOD LEFT AGAINST THOSE WHO HAVE ACCEPTED HIM AS THEIR SAVIOR. AND EVEN TOWARDS THOSE WHO ARE NOT BORN AGAIN, THERE STILL IS A GRACE EVIDENT IN THE NEW COVENANT THAT WASN'T EVIDENT IN THE OLD COVENANT. AND IT'S WRONG FOR US AS INTERCESSORS TO BE JUST BYPASSING JESUS AND ACTING LIKE HE DIDN'T DO ENOUGH. WE'VE GOT TO STAND THERE AND ASK MOSES, TELL GOD TO REPENT AND NOT POUR OUT HIS WRATH. SEE, THAT'S ANTI-CHRIST. THAT'S AGAINST CHRIST. IT'S AGAINST WHAT HE'S DOING. LET ME USE ANOTHER EXAMPLE. IN GENESIS CHAPTER 18, THIS IS ABRAHAM, AND THERE WERE TWO ANGELS THAT CAME WITH THE LORD AND TOLD ABRAHAM THAT IN THE NEXT YEAR, HIS WIFE SARAH WOULD CONCEIVE AND HAVE ISAAC, THEIR CHILD OF PROMISE. AND SO AFTER HE HAD HAD THIS uh, CONVERSATION WITH ABRAHAM AND HAD GIVEN HIM THIS PROMISE, HE SENT THE TWO ANGELS DOWN TO SODOM AND GOMORRAH 
and uh, told them to go down and check and see if the report he had heard was true. And if it was, he was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And he stayed there with Abraham, and Abraham began to plead with God for mercy upon the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. So this is recorded in Genesis chapter 18, and in verse 23, it says, And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all of the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous men within the city, then will I spare the place for their sake. And Abraham answered and said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Peradventure there shall lack five of the fifty righteous. Wilt thou destroy all the city uh, for lack of five? And he said, If I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. And he spake unto him yet again and said, Peradventure there shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for forty's sake. And he said unto him, O let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Peradventure there shall be thirty be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. And he said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure there shall be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty's sake. And he said, O let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet but this once, peradventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communion with Abraham, and Abraham returned unto his place. Now, people use this as an example, see, of intercession, and especially praying for a nation like people praying for the United States and saying, Oh God, don't bring your judgment upon the United States. Lord, you know, spare us because of the remnant that are here, and we plead with the Lord. There's a number of things I want to say about this. First of all, the Lord said that if He found 50 righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah, He would not destroy the place for the sake of the righteous. And He actually came all the way down to 10. If He could just find 10 righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah, God would have spared it for the sake of the 10 righteous. Even if you don't understand what I'm saying about the difference between New Testament intercession and Old Testament intercession, if nothing else, this ought to change the way people pray because there are millions of righteous people in the United States today. And I'm not just talking about people who have received forgiveness but then are just living totally contrary to God. There are millions of godly people that are seeking God with their whole heart. I COULD NAME THOUSANDS RIGHT NOW. YOU KNOW, IN OUR BIBLE COLLEGES, WE HAVE ABOUT eight OR 9,000 PEOPLE SCATTERED AROUND THE WORLD. AND IT'S TRUE THAT NOT EVERY ONE OF THEM ARE LIVING AN EXEMPLARY LIFE, BUT I WOULD SAY THE VAST MAJORITY OF THEM, MAN, THEY ARE GETTING THEIR MINDS RENEWED. WE ARE SEEING GREAT THINGS HAPPEN. AND THIS IS JUST A SMALL PORTION OF WHAT'S HAPPENING IN THE BODY OF CHRIST. THERE ARE MILLIONS OF GODLY, TURNED-ON CHRISTIANS IN THE UNITED STATES. AND JUST BASED ON THIS, IF NOTHING ELSE, IT WOULD MAKE US THINK THAT GOD WOULD SPARE AMERICA JUST BECAUSE HE WILL NOT JUDGE THE RIGHTEOUS WITH THE WICKED. BUT WHEN YOU FACTOR IN THE FACT THAT UNDER THE NEW COVENANT, JESUS HAS ATONED FOR THE SINS OF THE ENTIRE WORLD. FIRST JOHN CHAPTER 2, VERSE 2 SAYS THAT HE IS A PROPITIATION FOR OUR SINS, AND NOT FOR OURS ONLY, BUT ALSO FOR THE SINS OF THE WHOLE WORLD. JESUS HAS PAID FOR THE SINS OF THE WHOLE WORLD. AND I'M TELLING YOU, THERE IS A DIFFERENCE. UNDER THE OLD COVENANT, THE WRATH OF GOD WAS DISPLAYED. AND WHEN PEOPLE JUST MADE THEMSELVES TOTALLY OPPOSED TO GOD, YOU SAW WRATH AND PUNISHMENT COMING UPON THEM. THAT'S WHAT HAPPENED IN THE 19TH CHAPTER OF THE BOOK OF GENESIS. WHEN THE ANGELS ACTUALLY WENT DOWN INTO SODOM AND GOMORRAH, THEY FOUND THAT THERE WEREN'T EVEN 10 RIGHTEOUS PEOPLE. NOW, IN 1 PETER CHAPTER 2, IT TALKS ABOUT LOT he was a righteous man. He was a godly man. But even among Lot, his two daughters, it says that he went into the city to warn his daughters. We don't know how many he had, but it says plural. So there was at least two daughters 
THAT WERE MARRIED IN THE CITY, SUPPOSING THAT THEY HAD HUSBANDS. THAT WOULD BE FOUR PEOPLE. SUPPOSING THAT THEY HAD CHILDREN, IT COULD HAVE BEEN MORE THAN THAT. AND THEY MOCKED HIM AND SAID THAT IT WAS JUST IDLE TO THEM. AND FINALLY, THE ANGELS HAD MERCY ON HIM AND GRABBED HIM AND HIS FAMILY THAT WERE LEFT IN HIS HOUSE BY THE HAND AND TOOK HIM AND HIS WIFE AND HIS TWO DAUGHTERS THAT WERE LEFT uh, AND LED THEM OUT OF THE CITY. LOT'S WIFE TURNED AROUND AND LOOKED BEHIND HER. SHE LONGED AFTER her, HER CHILDREN, POSSIBLY GRANDCHILDREN THAT WERE STILL THERE, THEIR HOUSE, THEIR POSSESSIONS, AND SHE LONGED TO GO BACK INTO SODOM AND GOMORRAH. AND BECAUSE OF IT, SHE WAS TURNED INTO A PILLAR OF SALT. AND THEN LOT AND HIS TWO DAUGHTERS THAT REMAINED, THEY CAME OUT, AND HIS TWO DAUGHTERS THOUGHT THAT GOD HAD DESTROYED EVERYBODY BUT THEM. THEY THOUGHT THEY WERE THE ONLY PEOPLE LEFT. AND THEY SAID, WELL, MAN, WE NEED TO KEEP THE HUMAN RACE GOING. SO THEY GOT THEIR FATHER DRUNK AND ACTUALLY WENT IN AND HAD SEX WITH HIM, HAD INCEST, AND THEY BOTH HAD CHILDREN THROUGH INCEST. THAT'S HOW BAD SODOM AND GOMORRAH WERE. AND uh, THESE TWO ANGELS, WHEN THEY CAME INTO LOT'S HOUSE, THEY ACTUALLY HAD THE HOMOSEXUAL MEN OF THE CITY COME, AND THEY WANTED TO HAVE SEX WITH THEM. AND BECAUSE OF THIS, GOD JUST DESTROYED IT AND TURNED THEM ALL INTO ASHES. AND THERE'S A LOT OF PEOPLE THAT THINK THAT THIS IS WHAT'S GOING TO HAPPEN TO AMERICA. MATTER OF FACT, AGAIN, I MENTIONED THIS YESTERDAY, BUT WHEN I FIRST GOT TURNED ON TO THE LORD, I EXPERIENCED GOD'S GRACE BUT MY HEAD WASN'T RENEWED YET, AND AS A MAN THINKS, THAT'S THE WAY THAT YOU'RE GOING TO ACT. AND EVEN THOUGH I HAD EXPERIENCED GRACE, I DIDN'T UNDERSTAND IT, AND I WAS JUST ACTING THE WAY THAT I HAD BEEN TAUGHT. AND I LITERALLY HAD THIS TAUGHT TO ME THAT IF GOD DOESN'T JUDGE AMERICA, HE'S GOING TO HAVE TO APOLOGIZE TO SODOM AND GOMORRAH. AND THE LOGIC BEHIND THAT IS THAT AMERICA IS BECOMING AS UNGODLY AS SODOM AND GOMORRAH. AND, YOU KNOW, I JUST HAD ONE OF THE PASTORS uh, THAT IS A PART OF OUR ARMY ASSOCIATION. THAT STANDS FOR THE ASSOCIATION OF RELATED MINISTRIES INTERNATIONAL. AND I HAD ONE OF OUR PASTORS COME, AND I WAS EATING WITH HIM, AND HE WAS TELLING ME THAT IN THE COUNTY NEXT TO HIS, THERE IS ACTUALLY A TEACHER THAT COMES TO SCHOOL THAT, that PUTS EARS ON LIKE A CAT EAR AND HAS A TAIL AND USES A LITTER BOX AND IN THAT SCHOOL SYSTEM, THEY HAVE LITERALLY PUT LITTER BOXES IN THE CLASSROOMS AND KIDS ARE IDENTIFYING AS ANIMALS AND USING LITTER BOXES. THAT'S DEMONIC. THAT IS DEMONIC. AND SO AM I SAYING THAT AMERICA ISN'T UNGODLY? THINGS LIKE THIS ARE HAPPENING, AND YES, THERE'S UNGODLINESS, and, BUT INSTEAD OF THAT STATEMENT THAT IF GOD DOESN'T JUDGE AMERICA, HE'S GOING TO HAVE TO APOLOGIZE TO SODOM AND GOMORRAH, I WOULD NOW SAY THAT IF GOD DOES JUDGE AMERICA, HE'S GOING TO HAVE TO APOLOGIZE TO JESUS BECAUSE JESUS TOOK ALL OF GOD'S WRATH AGAINST OUR SIN UPON HIMSELF, AND HE PAID FOR THE SINS OF THE WHOLE WORLD. AGAIN, 1 JOHN chapter 2, VERSE 2 SAYS, HE IS THE PROPITIATION FOR OUR SINS AND NOT FOR OURS ONLY, BUT ALSO FOR THE SINS OF THE WHOLE WORLD. JESUS SATISFIED GOD'S HOLINESS AND JUSTICE BY BEARING THE SINS OF THE ENTIRE HUMAN RACE. AND SO GOD IS NOT ANY LONGER OBLIGATED TO VENT HIS WRATH UPON PEOPLE BECAUSE JESUS PAID FOR THOSE SINS. NOW, IS THIS TO SAY THAT THEREFORE AMERICA IS JUST HOME FREE? EVERYBODY'S HOME FREE. JESUS HAS PAID FOR THEIR SINS, AND SO GOD'S NOT GOING TO JUDGE THEM. NO, GOD HAS MADE A PAYMENT FOR THOSE SINS THROUGH PUTTING HIS WRATH UPON JESUS. BUT IF YOU REJECT JESUS, THEN YOU REJECTED THAT PAYMENT FOR YOUR SINS, AND YOU WILL HAVE TO PAY THE WAGE OF DEATH. AND SO I'M NOT SAYING THAT THERE ISN'T ANY FUTURE JUDGMENT COMING, BUT RIGHT NOW, BARRING WITH THE SECOND RETURN OF THE LORD, WHEN HE WILL JUDGE EVERYBODY ON WHETHER OR NOT THEY'VE ACCEPTED JESUS AND MADE HIM THEIR LORD, BEFORE THAT TIME, GOD NOW IS DEALING IN MERCY WITH PEOPLE. HE'S NOT IMPUTING MEN'S TRESPASSES UNTO THEM. THIS IS WHAT IT SAYS IN 2 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 5, RIGHT AFTER IT TALKS ABOUT IF ANY MAN BE IN CHRIST, HE IS A NEW CREATURE. OLD THINGS ARE PASSED AWAY. ALL THINGS ARE BECOME NEW. IT SAYS, AND ALL THINGS ARE OF GOD, WHO HATH RECONCILED US UNTO GOD AND HATH COMMITTED UNTO US THE MINISTRY OF RECONCILIATION AND WE ARE NOW AMBASSADORS TO CHRIST, AND HE'S NOT IMPUTING MAN'S SINS UNTO HIM, IS WHAT IT SAYS. 
AND SO GOD IS NOT IMPUTING THE SINS OF AMERICA UNTO US. BUT DOES THAT MEAN THAT WE'RE JUST HOME FREE AND THAT THEREFORE SINCE GOD'S NOT GOING TO OVERTHROW AMERICA THAT WE'RE SAFE? NO, WE ARE IN THE PROCESS OF DESTROYING OURSELVES. NOW, I BELIEVE THAT GOD IS INTERVENING. I ACTUALLY BELIEVE THAT WE ARE IN THE THIRD GREAT AWAKENING, THAT IT'S ALREADY BEGUN, EVEN THOUGH IT MAY BE IN THE VERY ELEMENTARY STAGES, BABY STAGES OF IT. I BELIEVE THAT AMERICA HAS A BRIGHT FUTURE AND THAT GOD IS TURNING THINGS AROUND. BUT UNLESS PEOPLE CHANGE, I GUARANTEE YOU, WE ARE IN THE PROCESS OF DESTROYING OURSELVES. WHEN YOU HAVE TEACHERS COMING IN AND ACTING LIKE AN ANIMAL AND USING A LITTER BOX IN FRONT OF YOUR ELEMENTARY CHILDREN, WHAT ARE WE TEACHING THE YOUNGER GENERATION? WE CAN'T CONTINUE TO DO THAT AND PROSPER. IT'S NOT THAT GOD IS GOING TO JUDGE US, BUT WHEN YOU ACT LIKE THE DEVIL, WHEN YOU YIELD YOURSELF TO THE DEVIL, YOU ARE JUST GIVING SATAN FREE ACCESS TO THIS NATION. AND RIGHT NOW, I BELIEVE THAT THERE IS A GROUNDSWELL. THERE, are, there IS A AWAKENING THAT'S TAKING PLACE, BUT THE MEDIA, AND SAD TO SAY, A LOT OF THE um, POLITICIANS AND PEOPLE THAT ARE IN LEADERSHIP ARE LEADING US IN THE WRONG DIRECTION. AND IF THEY DON'T CHANGE, IF WE DON'T SEE A RETURN TO GOD, uh, WE ARE IN THE PROCESS OF DESTROYING OURSELVES. AND WE'RE GIVING SATAN THE FREEDOM, AND HE'S COMING IN AND DESTROYING PEOPLE. THEY DON'T EVEN KNOW WHICH BATHROOM TO GO INTO. YOU KNOW, GOD SAID THAT HE CREATED THEM MALE AND FEMALE. THE LIBERALS CREATED ALL OF THE OTHER GENDERS THAT ARE LISTED. AND THEY ARE JUST IN THE PROCESS OF DESTROYING PEOPLE'S LIVES. AND SO I'M NOT SAYING THAT JUST BECAUSE GOD DOESN'T BRING JUDGMENT ON AMERICA THAT AMERICA'S SAFE. NO, AMERICA IS BEING FOUGHT AGAINST. SATAN IS TRYING TO DESTROY US AND TAKE AWAY THE LIBERTIES THAT HAVE BEEN FOUGHT FOR AND GIVEN TO US BY GOD. AND IF AMERICA DOESN'T CHANGE, WELL, THEN I GUARANTEE YOU WE ARE HEADED IN THE WRONG DIRECTION. BUT AGAIN, I SAY I BELIEVE THAT GOD IS TURNING THINGS AROUND. IT MAY NOT BE GETTING THE NOTICE AND THE MEDIA ATTENTION THAT IT DESERVES, BUT I BELIEVE GOD IS TURNING THIS AROUND. SO I SAY ALL OF THESE THINGS TO SAY THAT GOD, IF HE JUDGES AMERICA, HE'S GOING TO HAVE TO APOLOGIZE TO JESUS BECAUSE GOD PLACED THE JUDGMENT, HIS WRATH AGAINST uh, WHAT'S GOING ON IN AMERICA UPON JESUS, AND JESUS RECONCILED US UNTO GOD. GOD IS NOT TICKED OFF. GOD IS NOT EVEN IN A BAD MOOD. DOES THAT MEAN THAT GOD IS PLEASED WITH WHAT'S HAPPENING? NO, HE DOESN'T TAKE ANY PLEASURE IN UNGODLINESS. HE'S AWARE THAT WHAT'S GOING ON IS DESTROYING OUR LIBERTIES AND TAKING AWAY OUR FREEDOMS, AND HE'S SPEAKING TO PEOPLE LIKE ME AND YOU AND OTHER PEOPLE, AND HE'S HAVING US RAISE UP AND CHANGE THINGS AND GET INVOLVED IN THIS PROCESS AND TURN THE NATION BACK TO GOD. GOD IS NOT PLEASED. HE'S NOT INDIFFERENT. He's uh, ACTIVELY INVOLVED, RAISING PEOPLE UP TO TURN THINGS AROUND. BUT YOU DO NOT HAVE TO PLEAD WITH GOD THE WAY THAT ABRAHAM DID AND SAY, OH, GOD, YOU, you AREN'T GOING TO BE UNRIGHTEOUS, ARE YOU? YOU WOULDN'T JUDGE THE RIGHTEOUS WITH THE WICKED. REPENT, TURN FROM YOUR ANGER. WE DON'T PRAY THAT WAY. INSTEAD, WE GO THROUGH JESUS, AND WE PRAY BECAUSE OF WHAT JESUS HAS DONE. AND WE INTERCEDE. THERE'S STILL A PLACE TO INTERCEDE. YOU KNOW, I'M RUNNING SHORT OF TIME TODAY, BUT ON MY PROGRAM TOMORROW, I'LL SHOW YOU THE NEW TESTAMENT WAY TO INTERCEDE FOR PEOPLE AND FOR A NATION. I'M STILL PRAYING AND INTERCEDING, BUT I DON'T DO IT THE WAY IT WAS DONE UNDER THE OLD COVENANT. UNDER THE OLD COVENANT, IT WASN'T WRONG AT THE TIME BECAUSE JESUS HADN'T COME, AND THERE WAS A WRATH FROM GOD AGAINST OUR SIN. WHEN HE STARTED REVEALING HIS STANDARD OF RIGHT AND WRONG, HE HAD TO ENFORCE IT. HE WOULD HAVE BEEN UNJUST IF HE HADN'T HAVE JUDGED THOSE SINS. BUT IN THE NEW TESTAMENT, HE HAS JUDGED SINS THROUGH JESUS. AND GOD IS FREE TO SHOW GRACE AND MERCY TO PEOPLE THAT HE WASN'T FREE TO SHOW UNDER THE OLD COVENANT BECAUSE NOW WE HAVE AN ATONEMENT THAT THE OLD TESTAMENT SAINTS DIDN'T HAVE. JESUS MADE A DIFFERENCE IN EVERYTHING, IN THE WAY THAT GOD DEALS WITH PEOPLE. AND IF YOU DON'T UNDERSTAND THIS, WELL, THEN YOU'LL HAVE A WRONG IMPRESSION OF WHAT THE TRUE NATURE AND CHARACTER OF GOD IS. AND YOU'LL PRAY LIKE AN OLD TESTAMENT PERSON, LIKE ABRAHAM, AND SAYING, GOD, YOU AREN'T UNJUST, ARE YOU? YOU WOULDN'T DO THIS. AND YOU'LL TRY AND INTIMIDATE AND badger GOD INTO DOING THINGS. I'M TELLING YOU, THAT'S NOT THE WAY THAT WE SHOULD RELATE TO GOD. JESUS RECONCILED US UNTO GOD.
You know, let me turn over and read that passage. I think I might have misquoted that a little bit out of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And it says in verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Not is going to or might reconcile us. No, it's already been done. He hath reconciled us unto himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. And here's the part that I missed when I quoted that. It said, here's the way he reconciled us unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. God is not imputing people's trespasses unto them. He is not punishing us for our sins the way that we see under the old covenant. And this is reinforced in Romans chapter 5, that before the law, sin was not imputed when there is no law. Now, after the law, God is once again not imputing man's sins unto them because Jesus bore those sins and took our punishment and so therefore God is not holding people's sins against them. Again, does this mean that we're safe? Well, it means that God's wrath isn't coming on us once we accept the forgiveness and the cleansing that's available through Jesus, but we still have consequences to our sin because Satan will take advantage of that sin. So it's, it's important that lost men and believers live as holy as they possibly can because Satan will take advantage of that sin, whether you're a person that has not accepted Jesus as your Lord or even if you've been born again. If you go yield yourself to Satan, he's going to destroy you. Romans 6, 16 says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, of whether sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. If you yield to sin, you are giving Satan freedom to come in and steal, kill, and to destroy. SO THERE'S STILL CONSEQUENCES TO SIN, BUT GOD IS NOT THE ONE WHO IS RELEASING HIS WRATH AGAINST SIN. HE PUT HIS WRATH AGAINST YOUR SIN AND MY SIN AND EVEN THE SIN OF THE UNBELIEVERS UPON JESUS. JESUS HAS borne THAT WRATH, AND SO TODAY WE ARE NOT HAVING GOD IMPUTE OUR SINS. THAT'S HOW HE RECONCILED US UNTO GOD. HE IMPUTED OUR SIN TO JESUS. YOU KNOW, IF I WAS TO GO BUY SOMETHING AND I GAVE THEM MY CREDIT CARD, THAT'S IMPUTING IT UNTO ME. THAT'S PUTTING IT ON MY ACCOUNT AND I HAVE TO PAY THE DEAL. BUT IF I STARTED TO GIVE MY CREDIT CARD AND INSTEAD JESUS CAME UP AND GAVE HIS CREDIT CARD AND SAID, PUT IT ON MY ACCOUNT, WELL, THEN WOULD YOU GO AHEAD AND PAY THE BILL? BECAUSE YOU SAY, WELL, THAT'S NOT REALLY FAIR. JESUS, YOU AREN'T GETTING THIS. THIS IS SOMETHING FOR ME. I OUGHT TO AT LEAST PAY PART OF THIS. PEOPLE WOULD SAY, NO, MAN, if, IF JESUS COMES AND GIVES HIS CREDIT CARD AND PUTS IT ON HIS ACCOUNT, LET HIM PAY FOR IT. WELL, THIS IS WHAT GOD DID. GOD PUT MY SIN UPON JESUS, AND HE PAID FOR ALL OF IT. AND I'M NOT GOING TO PAY FOR ANY OF IT. NOW, SATAN WILL MAKE ME PAY. SATAN WILL COME IN, SO I STILL DON'T GO OUT AND LIVE IN SIN. BUT GOD IS NOT REJECTING ME AT ALL OVER MY SIN. HE PLACED THAT REJECTION UPON JESUS. I'M OUT OF TIME TODAY, BUT I HAVE THIS BOOK IN ENGLISH AND IN SPANISH ENTITLED THE TRUE NATURE OF GOD. WE HAVE CD'S AND DVD'S WITH THIS TEACHING ON IT. AND THEN I ALSO HAVE THIS LITTLE SUMMARY OF THE TRUE NATURE OF GOD THAT'S A FREE GIFT. REMEMBER THAT TOMORROW WILL BE MY LAST DAY TO MAKE THIS TEACHING AVAILABLE OVER TELEVISION. SO PLEASE GO TO THE EFFORT TO REQUEST THEM TODAY. LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER AND PLEASE CALL OR WRITE TODAY. Andrew is offering his booklet, The True Nature of God, as his free gift to you today. This offer is limited to one free booklet per household and is available in the U.S., U.K., Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. I would like to encourage you to please get this material on the true nature of God. I have books in English and in Spanish, and then I have CDs and DVDs. AND I TELL YOU, THIS IS FOUNDATIONAL STUFF. IT'S LIKE IF YOU'RE BUILDING A HOUSE, IF YOUR FOUNDATION IS NO GOOD, THE HOUSE IS NOT GOING TO LAST. THIS IS FOUNDATIONAL, AND I PROMISE YOU, IT WOULD REALLY, REALLY HELP YOU. SO PLEASE REQUEST THE MATERIAL ON THE TRUE NATURE OF GOD. IT'S A KEEPER. IT'LL CHANGE YOUR LIFE.
Andrew's complete series, The True Nature of God, is available in a CD or DVD album and as a book in either English or Spanish. Each of these resources is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. We also want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software. The Living Commentary includes more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today for $120. We want to say a special thank you to the Grace Partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your gifts make it possible to put free ministry materials into the hands of many people in need. If you're not already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life. In the month of October, Andrew will be speaking in Colorado Springs. Next, join Andrew at the campus in Woodland Park for our annual Minister's Conference. Andrew will be joined by guest speakers Mario Murillo, Bob Nichols, Dwayne Sheriff, Bob Yandian, Billy Epperhart, and Greg Moore. Next, Andrew will be speaking in the UK. Lastly, in October, Andrew will be in Walsall, England for the Andrew Womack Ministries European Ministers Conference with guest speakers Bob Yandian, Billy Epperhart, and Paul Milligan. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, visit our website at awmi.net. I wanted to let you know that we have now teamed up with a ministry called I Donate so that we can receive cars and boats and stocks and jewelry. We have only done this a very short period of time and already we've had tens of thousands of dollars worth of things donated. People, you know, that don't have cash, but they have something that they want to donate. So if you're interested in that, you can follow the information on the screen and participate. And we would love to help you give these assets to the ministry. I want to remind you that the Lord encouraged me to designate 2022 as the year of the Bible. And I'm encouraging people to read through the Bible in one year. This is a Bible reading plan that we use in our Caris Bible College that we will give to you as a free gift. You can also go to our website and download this. And there is a place on the website for you to sign a pledge. It's not where we're going to dun you for anything or shame you, but just make a commitment to read through the Bible in one year. So check it out, our Bible reading plan on awmi.net.